All right, hello everyone, and welcome back to Kotobo Space Program, where today we are having a look at yet another wonderful mod, this time in the form of the Rat Pack, which is being made by forum user Satnet, and what this glorious little piece of work looks to add into the game is, well, a couple of things. Normally, most mods tend to be fairly focused in on one specific thing. This mod pack, on the other hand, has taken a sort of scattershot approach and has added into the game three new categories of parts. The first being ram air turbines, the second being thrust reversers, and the third being terrain warning systems, all of which to help you with your various space planes, which is just wonderful. So let's jump into the space plane hangar and actually take a look at all the parts that do make up this mod, and let's grab ourselves a Mark 1 command pod for size comparison's sake, and then head into the adventure advanced mode tab where we will thank the mod maker who has actually taken advantage of a custom tab here where you can see here we have the rat pack tab where we then have the overall rat pack parts up at the top and then split down into the three subcategories i just mentioned moments ago of the ram air turbines the thrust reversers and of course the terrain warning systems Oh, I'm so happy about this split up into its various categories. This, quite frankly, is what every mod should do. But let's start up here with the uh, Ram Air Turbines first, and what these various parts are, five in total, are a method for basically recharging the batteries on your space planes, or, well, really, quite frankly, any rocket, honestly, uh, by using mainly Ram Air intake predominantly. These will help you recharge your your electric charge so that, you know, your command pods don't run out of juice and die on you. Now, the first one we have here is the EPM Dash Mark III Emu, which is an emergency power unit, and this one's quite interesting as it can use either a tiny amount of liquid fuel as well as a tiny amount of air intake at uh, 0 0.02 per second liquid fuel and 0 0.03 per second air intake to produce 20 electric charge per second. Now, of course, if you are in space or on a planet that doesn't quite have a whole lot of atmosphere, it also can use liquid fuel and oxidizer at a rate of 0 0.02 per second liquid fuel and 0 0.02 per second oxidizer to produce a slightly less 18 electric charge per second. Now, this uh, emergency power unit also does come with quite a sizable battery and 500 and also holds a small amount of liquid fuel and oxidizer at 90 liquid fuel and 110 oxidizer. Overall, a pretty cool little unit, which um, actually isn't little now that I think about it, because if we actually bring it on to the uh, space plane hangar here, is massive. It's really made for your larger shuttles as a good additional power unit for it. So if you know you uh, don't like using the nuclear power or solar power or for some specialized purpose, you can use these for getting your electric charge through air intake or oxidizer again, plus a little bit of liquid fuel. Now, if we dump this baby, we then have the pinwheel rat dash one ram air intake which is pretty cool i like this thing now this if we click it on the side and zoom in is just a tiny tiny little uh, pinwheel essentially that spins and creates electrical charge and it does have a small battery of uh, five electrical charge there and will produce 0.75 electric charge per second max uh, depending on the speed of your craft it's quite cool now the next thing we have here is the rat 360 cage master ram air turbine a little bit bigger than the uh, little pinwheel one, but, uh, you know, quite a nice little thing. Now, this one, when activated, actually does open up to have basically that little turbine in the center of the cylinder spinning, and it will produce a maximum of 1.5 electric charge per second and has a battery of 20. Very cool indeed. Now, the next one we have is the Rat-6000 Packmaster. And if we click that one on the side and activate, there we go. It's basically a small little windmill that pops out. And this one will produce 
produce 4.5 charge per second max and has a battery of 100, which is quite cool. And then the last one we have is the Rat-720 Topper Ram Air Intake, which is actually a nose cone, which is quite nice. And this one, when activated, well, it's just a little thing on the front that spins. There we go. And it will produce a 3 electric charge per second max and has a built-in battery of 50. All quite cool pieces, and you may have noticed, while I was plopping all of these on to this uh, Mark 1 command pod, we had a uh, power curve graph, which is kind of a cool little feature. Uh, each of these uh, individual pieces will have essentially a maximum amount of uh, power that it will produce at an ideal speed. Because you'll remember when I was reading off all of these, like this uh, Dash 1 pinwheel, its charge rate was 0.75 per second maximum. But if we go back to the pinwheel and hit the power curve graph, you can actually see a much more detailed uh, version of this. So we'll see here the vertical ticks are one electric charge per second. So that blue line right there is one electrical charge per second. And the horizontal ticks along the bottom are 100 meters per second. So at a speed of roughly 200 meters per second, we will produce that maximum 0.75 or 1.5 rather, uh, electric charge per second on this particular one. So I like that, that it has the curve for each of these so that you'll see the ideal speed for charging your craft using these. And each of them is different. If we click on this one and look at its graph, there we go. It's a bit more fluid of a graph depending on speed, though it really does require a higher speed to start up and get going. Uh, this particular windmill one here, lovely. <laughs> oh, I like that this one kind of goes up and then down because, well, that may be a little too much, but then boom, you're back up and good. Good times, good times. But yes, I love that it has these different curves so you can see exactly the right speed that you need to actually charge up your craft. And it, it's just a cool little additional feature that's quite nice. And you have a different one of these graphs for each of these, including the uh, Emu Emergency Power one here. But let's check these things off. We no longer need them here. And let's go down to the thrust reversers. Now these... Well, they're, they're thrust reversers. They will reverse the thrust of the engine attached to them. So let's take a look at the TR-1 backup thruster here. And if we just pop it onto there. Now what you use these for is basically you attach a jet engine. If we go back into there. Oh, no. Engine tab would be helpful. Uh, there we go. Basic jet engine. And you attach your engine into this attachment point here. So you'd have your fuel lines and etc. over this way, and then your engine here, and when you want to reverse, you activate this part, and it extends out, sort of angles itself, so now that it's angling the thrust, that direction, so in front of the craft rather than behind the, gra the craft, so that your ship will begin to reverse itself. Eh, pretty self-explanatory, not a whole lot to go through there. And uh, in regards to the two different varieties we have, we have the TR-1 backup thrust reverser, of course, which is really designed for the uh, turbojet and rapier engines. And the second one, the TRL back way back thrust reverser, is just a much larger design version of it, which is really designed for uh, to fit longer 1.25 meter engines, uh, such as the LV-N. So just a different sizes for different engines, but all works the same. You activate it, and it extends out, angles itself, and your ship will start to reverse. Now, the last parts that we have here are the, uh, God, what was it called again? Terrain warning systems. There we go. And these are wonderful. You know me, I'm awful at flying space planes. These actually really help me a lot with flying space planes. So these two terrain awareness warning systems, uh, the first one 
is basically the same sort of thing that you would imagine in, uh, oh god, I'm trying to think of a movie that had it in, but whenever, like, in a movie or TV show, you see a plane heading towards a mountain or something, and it starts going, dee dee dee, pull up, dee dee dee, pull up, it's that sort of a thing. This TAWS-1 lookout basically looks in front of the plane, there we go, zoom in on it, and will tell you, well, oh crap, you're about to crash into the train, you may want to pull up. So it'll start dinging and saying pull up, etc. It's quite a cool little feature, and one that's, um, <laughs> useful if you're a crappy pilot like me. Now, the second one is the TRS-01 look down, and this is a bit more complicated. This is actually a terrain scanning radar that will show you where in front of your aircraft is safe to land. I love this thing. It's gorgeous. <laughs> the ability to actually show in front of the aircraft where it is, you know, flat terrain that is safe to land is just amazing. And it it makes me just so very happy that that's a thing. Now, these both do use one electric charge to actually function. So you will need a charge for your craft to actually continue to work. But both of them are very useful. Essentially, this one's just an early warning system. If you're going to crash, it'll tell you, oh, God, pull up now quick and this one will tell you uh, where it is good and safe to land. Now there is one final part which strangely isn't in any of these tabs, so if we go back up to Rat Pack, we have this, the LEST-1 Oops, trigger. And what this is, is basically a little part that is attached to your craft, and it detects when you're about to crash, and it automatically does the abort sequence. So whatever you have in your action groups for the abort sequence, it will do. So if it's if your aircraft is about to crash, it just automatically does things, which for me being an awful pilot is wonderful cuz I crash a lot and I usually attach parachutes and emergency systems to my planes for that very reason and this makes it so that I don't have to worry about activating them if the plane's going to crash it just instantly activates them and all is well <laughs> oh god I'm a horrible pilot but let's actually play around with some of these things so let's not save this and load up first the rat pack demo let's load this baby up Excellent. Now on this, this is a lovely experimental plane given to you by the mod maker. So as you can see here, we have glorious thrust reversers. We also do have the lookout warning system up there. And, oh god, where are they? I'm trying to look for any of the... There we go. There is a ram air turbine for electrical charge. Very cool, very good indeed. So let's launch this thing, and it'll get you a good idea of a couple of the systems. So we'll see on here the reverse thrust, the basic uh, ram air turbine system. So let's actually open up the ram air turbine systems here first. Activate those, so it just pops out. It has its little turbine, which is stationary right now, because of course, we're not moving. So let's actually activate that one too. Beautiful. And if we start to throttle up. Oh, actually, before we show those off, we should probably show off the thrust reversers. Activate the thrust reverser. Probably not good to only do it on the one side. There we go. Do it on that side too. And throttle up. There we go. We are slowing down. Beautiful. Beautiful. We have come to a stop. And we are now reversing. So let's go backwards. Oh god, turn them off, turn them off, turn them off, turn them off. There we go. I think they're on an action group, but I've forgotten which action group they are on. Excellent. So we have reversed, and the uh, reverse, uh, or thrust reverses rather, have worked. So let's go back to being forward. You uh, can see here that these are starting to turn. So they're starting to produce electric charge. And if we pull up there we go. Excellent. We are in the air quite nicely now. And let's activate this lovely system, the Lookout Radar. Now, what you can do with this is you can set various presets and, uh, like, what the landing speed is you want, the max altitude you want for it to be activated, max speed, etc. And there are various presets that you can do here, which is quite good. 
And as you can see here, we have audio alerts, which we can activate or deactivate and uh, turn this whole system on or off. But what's really cool is this radar system here, which will sh basically show us where the land is that we're coming up to. Let's actually put in our landing gear here, flip around. And this is not exactly the most useful bit of information, but it's quite a cool addition to this particular ra radar. This basically it'll show you when you're really getting close to the land, it'll show up on this radar system. Uh, so if we go back towards the shore and go quite low, we should start to see the shoreline up here on this radar system. And now on this, you can flip horizontally or you know close it, of course, there, and then always bring it up through toggle radar view. Beautiful. And okay, let's go down a bit. This craft is actually quite laggy. Interesting. I haven't seen this sort of frame drops in a while. Oh, come on, show up on the radar. Hmm, it's not showing up. If we angle, there we go, there's the land. And you'll see it is telling us to pull up. I'm going to be quiet real quick and do that again. Go down. Terrain. Pull up. Terrain. Pull up. There terrain. you go. Excellent. Pull so basically up. you want to keep that terrain line outside of you. If it's inside your view, you're terrain. heading for the ground. And so you, then you'll get those audio warnings as well as a textual warning right down here. And it's quite cool. I, I just I love the sound of that. So if we dip down again. Terrain. Pull up. Terrain. Beautiful. And we're going to crash and die, which was actually intentional for once because we're going to go back into the space plane hangar and load up a just random craft, which will add into uh, it the other terrain awareness system. So if we go back to the space plane hangar and go in i mean that that is a very cool terrain system very fun because it does give you that audio warning now i'm not a big fan of the radar system that it has because i don't think it provides you with a whole lot of information now if we just load a slightly less laggy airplane like the aries 3a and attach to it hold on a moment there we go the look down radar oh i love this thing Let's actually, there we go. Beautiful, right in front there and go to launch. This is by far my favorite radar system in this mod pack. And I think of any mod pack, cause if we go to actually turn on its radar view. Now we can also turn on and off its ping. So if we, right now it's defaulted to silent because this ping is purely basically the sound of the radar bouncing off the ground. I actually like to turn it on though because it, it basically lets you know that you're close to the ground. If you're high up in the air and there's no real ground for it to ping off of because you're in the air, then it's not going to make any noise. But right now, since we are on the runway, it is making that pinging noise that you can hear. Now let's turn on the brake real quick and take a look at all the things that we have on here. Now this terrain radar view, the green is where it's good to land. And the farther up or down this chart basically means the worse it is. So uh, blue is lower than where we currently are and green is good to land. And if it was red, oh, you don't wanna land there. Now we also see the terrain curve here, which is quite cool. Now we see our maximum and minimum distance of the radar right here and we can change all of these things so we can change the scale to 50 meters 25 meters uh, default is five so basically each one of these little squares is five meters and we can also do the reference node so right now it's center the reference node is center basically it's between the seed level and lowest point now we could also go to lowest point which is purely the lowest point of the uh, ground radar below your craft or sea level which is is the terrain above the sea level. Now I prefer it at center because it's showing you a good place to land. Now here we also have the radius, which is basically just how much area we're looking at right now. So at the moment we're seeing a hundred meters in every direction around us. Now we can up that to a maximum of a thousand meters and a minimum of 10 meters. Now I personally like it somewhere around 500. I think that's quite a good location that gives you enough 
ahead of time warning that, oh yeah, you uh, you need to land somewhere. And uh, let's see, what's a good one on here? Probably 10, that's a good uh, scale there. And then the final one is the orientation between either the ground or the parts. I gotta admit, I don't understand exactly what that part is, but every time I go to parts, it's just turned off. So let's stick with ground and throttle up and activate our engines so we can get rid of that beeping noise. Because, well, that, quite frankly, is what you want to do. You really don't want to hear that beeping. So there we go. We are on the move. That stops the beeping because basically it knows that we're moving. And as you can see, we can see sort of the trend of the terrain. We can see where how the terrain is changing around us. And take off. There we go. Excellent. I just, I love this view. It's just so cool being able to see how the terrain is changing all around us. And then that warning light, of course, telling, or warning sound, rather, telling us, uh, well, you're, you're kind of close to the ground there. You probably want to do something. And it's just... It's great. I, I really love this view. And me being a really crappy pilot, it honestly does help me. Because I one of my worst things is figuring out exactly where I can land. And if I have this thing on, say, 500 meters ahead of me, I know that 500 meters ahead of me, there's a place I can potentially land. Or, of course, a place, alternatively, where I really don't want to land. Now, if you want to go back to the default view of 100, you can just click this 100 meter button here. We'll go back to the 5 meter scale there. This is actually quite cool as we get close to the buildings. You will see the buildings on this map. And there we go. There's the buildings. Excellent. Beautiful. And now we're in a good, clean place to land at the moment. Good times. Good times indeed. But yes, that is really all I have to show you left on this mod. It is glorious. And of course, the Rat Pack by forum user Satnet. And if you would like to try out this mod for yourself, you can take a look at the link in the description as always. And I definitely, definitely would suggest you do that, especially if you are a fan of space planes, but like me, aren't very good at them. These different terrain warning systems are great. The thrust reversers are very useful for being able to, you know, actually back up your crafts. And the Ram Air Turbines are a great little addition to give you extra electric charge. So overall, just a cool, wonderful little mod pack, and definitely go and check it out. And of course, I do hope that you have enjoyed this episode today, and that you do come back for the next, when we'll be hopefully looking at yet another wonderful mod. But until that time, thank you for watching, my friends. And as always, have a good one.